Hey there and welcome into a special Major League Baseball playoff edition of the Catch here at Las Vegas Ballpark. As always, I'm your host, Matt Neverett. Welcome back. Today we're coming to you from our Play Studios Club here at Las Vegas Ballpark, which is available during the season to club season ticket holders, sweet ticket holders, and home plate diamond ticket holders. But it's been a versatile space for all kinds of events since the ballpark opened at the beginning of 2019. Now, Play Studios itself was founded in 2011 by gaming executive Andrew Pascal, and it's established its reputation as a game changer in the social casino industry with the introduction of its My Vegas Facebook game. And to learn more about Play Studios, visit playstudios.com or go check out the My Vegas Facebook page. It's a great area up here. I mean, there is so much going on. A $1 million kitchen. We got rotating celebrity and local chefs during the season. 26 TVs, a full service bar, as you can see behind me. You even got your own private VIP entrance. Whatever you want, we got up here at the Play Studios Club here at Las Vegas Ballpark. Well, we're in Major League Baseball playoffs, as I mentioned, and there are plenty of things to talk about. The wild card round with the expanded format of 16 teams it was really exciting. It provided some really interesting first round matchups. We're going to break them all down right here on the Catch at Las Vegas Ballpark. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back into the catch here at Las Vegas Ballpark. Matt and Everett coming to you from our Play Studios Club here on our suite level. MLB Playoff Edition here at the Catch at Las Vegas Ballpark. And the number two seeded Oakland Athletics, the Aviators Big League affiliate, took on the number seven seeded Chicago White Sox in the American League Wild Card Round. And what was an exciting matchup of two teams featuring two different styles? Obviously, the White Sox with their young team, a lot of offense, decent enough pitching, but it's really the big boppers in the lineup, including Jose Abreu and Tim Anderson, both MVP candidates in the American League. But for Oakland, it's a mix. They have a great pitching an even better bullpen and a lineup that can produce some pop. They were entering the postseason without the services of their all-star platinum glove third baseman, Matt Chapman. They had signed Jake Lamb at the end of the regular season, if you remember, to try to fill some of that void. And Lamb did a, a relatively proficient job throughout the end of the regular season and uh, in the first round of the playoffs. The Oakland Athletics defeated the Chicago White Sox by a two-game-to-one series win. It was the first playoff series victory for the A's since 2006. They had been uh, on a bit of a drought. Uh, the Athletics actually dropped game one to the White Sox by a 4-1 to score, then rallied behind both Chris Bassett and Frankie Montas out of the bullpen to take games two and three by scores of 5-3 to three and 6-4, to four, despite being out hit by four or more in each of those two final games. As I mentioned, the White Sox love to hit. That's what they do the best. And they out hit Oakland in all three games of these three game series and lost. Game one featured all of the offense for the Athletics in the first three innings. Game two, all their offense was in the first four innings. It was a pair of runs in each of the first two frames and a Chris Davis solo home run in the fourth inning. It was a Marcus Simeon two-run home run in the second to put the Athletics up for good in game two. Uh, the White Sox, meanwhile, in that 5-3 to three loss in game two, scored all three of those runs in the eighth and the ninth. They say better late than never, but that wasn't the case for Chicago uh, in Game 2. Game 3 was won by a four-run fourth inning for the Athletics, including another pair of runs in the fifth as insurance runs, uh, including 2019 Aviator Sean Murphy, who had an outstanding season here at the inaugural season at Las Vegas Ballpark last year. He blasted a solo home run to lead off that four-run fourth. It was his first and only home run of that postseason series. It was his first postseason home run in his first postseason. Go figure. And taking a look around the rest of the American League during the wild card round, the number one seeded Tampa Bay Rays made quick work of the number eight seed Toronto slash Buffalo Blue Jays. Uh, two games to zero, quick sweep, like I said, three to one and eight to two finals. Tampa uh, really looking good, and they were really hot coming into the playoffs. More on them in a moment. Number three seeded Minnesota fell to the number six seeded Astro, much to the chagrin of baseball fans everywhere. Everyone's still a little upset about you know, the Astros in the postseason a couple of years ago. But for the Astros, uh, they really 
woke up offensively, winning by 3-1 and 4-1. It was the pitching that did a great job for them, surprisingly, in this uh, first-round series. But for Minnesota, the real storyline, they have lost 18 straight postseason games, and they've been outscored by a 107-48 to mark during that stretch. The playoff woes for the Minnesota Twins continuing this year. They were swept in two games by the Astros. And finally, Cleveland as the number four seed fell to the number five seeded New York Yankees. The Evil Empire won two games to zero, 12 to three and 10 to nine. A lot of offense in that series as a whole, including the longest nine inning game in baseball history, not postseason history, not in the history of both of those teams. The longest nine inning game ever. Game three, that 10 to nine final lasted four hours and 50 minutes. Araldis Chapman got the last out of the series and fell to his knees. It was a long one for those of you that stuck around for the entirety of that almost five hour nine inning contest. Uh, more power to you. I definitely could not do that. We're talking about the Twins and their postseason drought. The Indians with a nice little postseason drought of their own. They've lost eight straight postseason games but they've lost 10 straight elimination games in the playoffs. That is the longest stretch of all time, extending their own streak. The Indians dropped in the first round by the Yankees. So we'll get you to the American League Divisional Series here in a moment, but we're taking a look at the wild card in the National League. And as was the case in the American League, the 1-8 matchup featured a quick two-game sweep. It was the number one seeded Los Angeles Dodgers taking down the Milwaukee Brewers by scores of 4-2 and 3-0. Quick, easy, wham, bam for the Dodgers. For the Brewers, first team to ever make the playoffs with a losing record, uh, mostly due to uh, everything that's been going on this year. A 29-31 record for the Milwaukee Brewers in the regular season. And then, yeah, bounced in quick two-game series by the Los Angeles Dodgers, the presumptive favorite. Another team, though, with a really good shot to win the World Series still to this point are the number two-seeded Atlanta Braves, who swept the number seven-seeded Cincinnati Reds in historic fashion, two games to zero. They won by scores of one to nothing and five to nothing. First time ever that a team has shut another team out in 22 innings in the playoffs. It's the longest in any postseason series that any team has gone without scoring a run. And uh, just the third playoff series win for Atlanta since 2001. After all that dominance in the late 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s, the Braves had lost 10 straight postseason series. So for Atlanta, a good job to get back into the next round for the first time in almost 20 years. And for the Reds, a lot of work to do offensively as they were hot, hot, hot coming into the playoffs and then were blanked for 22 straight Innings, one to nothing and five to nothing, including a, a very elongated game one that lasted over 12 innings. And the number three seed, Chicago Cubs upset, big time upset. The Miami Marlins, a.k.a. the bottom feeders, which is what they call themselves after uh, Philadelphia Phillies broadcaster gave them that nickname during the year. The bottom feeders defeated the Cubs two to nothing. They made quick work of the Cubbies by scores of five to one and two to zero. Uh, Miami, what a season for them. Throughout this uh, you know, show, the catch at Las Vegas ballpark, we've been talking about the Marlins and the Cardinals as the two teams that really struggled with the COVID-19 diagnosis, a lot of players rotating in and out. The Marlins had 18 players test positive for COVID-19 during the regular season. They used 61 different players, which is, if you know anything about baseball, crazy because there's only 25 this year, 28 men on a roster. So to rotate 61 guys in and out, is unreal just in and of itself, but to have a good season is even better. Uh, the Marlins finished the regular season also 28 games in 24 days. So they had some beat up bodies, they had some sick bodies, and 28 games in just over three weeks to end the regular season. And oh, yeah, this all comes after they finished dead last in the American League East, or rather the National League East last year. 105 losses for the Marlins and granted in a shortened 60-game season, but they make the playoffs next year. With everything that went on, I think that Don Mattingly is a shoo-in, 100% book it for the National League Manager of the Year. Great job by Mattingly and the Miami Marlins staff and Derek Jeter turning things around, especially in the uh, court of public opinion. And finally, we mentioned the Cardinals. They were brought down by the exciting San Diego Padres, two games to one. Uh, Cardinals actually won game one by a 7-4 score and then were dropped 11-9 and 4 to nothing. The Padres, as they've done all year, caught fire and just started hitting and didn't really ever stop. The Padres needed the bats because their arms were beat up. Both Mike Clevenger and Denelson Lamett out for that series. They had both gotten hurt in the days leading up to the playoffs. And so a lot of people wondering how the Padres were going to fill those innings. 
They used 26 pitchers to fill the 27 innings uh, across the three games because of those two injuries. And game three was a historic one. Featured nine pitchers to cover a nine-inning game, which was the most since 1901. No team has ever used more than eight pitchers in a nine-inning game since 1901 until the Padres were able to drop the Cardinals by a 4 to nothing score. And it was the only time that nine pitchers have ever combined to shut out their opponent. Again, the Padres using 26 pitchers to cover the 27 innings. Uh, historic in many different ways. Uh, but then you take a look to the division series where they were dropped, uh, swept rather, in three games by Los Angeles Dodgers. It was a clean sweep on the other side as well with the number two seeded Atlanta Braves. Uh, sweeping Miami, which a lot of people saw coming. So quick and easy work with L.A. and the Braves winning their, their division series, and they're taking on the pair in the championship series. Not quite as easy in the American League, especially in the matchup between Oakland and the Astros, which was one of the better postseason matchups really in the last 15 or so years with two teams with a lot on the line. Ultimately, it was Oakland falling in three games or four games rather three to one was the final game count Astros took game one by a 10 to 5 score and they won game two five to one the A's fought back with a nine to seven win in game three but Houston's offense proved to be too much the 11 to six win in game four sent the Oakland Athletics home Houston making their fourth straight trip to the American League Championship Series and that comes after losing 16 of their final 24 regular season games. This was a team that was trending downward. You hear about teams trending upward into the playoffs and getting hot at the right time. The Astros were in a complete free fall heading into the postseason, and they win their first two series. Now, Frankie Montas it took the loss in Game 4 for Oakland. It was an interesting season for Montas. He began the year as Oakland's opening day starter. Came out, set the world on fire. He was 2-1 and one with a 1.57 ERA through his first four starts. But then after that, went 1-5 and five with an ERA just over 9 in his uh, final eight starts. The pitching was the problem for Oakland. You knew it was going to be a challenge against it, uh, an Astros team that hits the cover off the ball. And as I said, making their fourth straight trip to the ALCS. So they've got the postseason experience. But none of Oakland's four starters went longer than four and a third. They're not a team that stretches their starter out six, seven innings with any kind of regularity, and mostly thanks to their extremely strong bullpen. But you want your starter to at least get you five in one of the four games, right? No starter went longer than four and a third. Chris Bassett, Sean Manaya, Jesus Azardo, and Frankie Montas all combined 0-2 with the 8-8-2 ERA. And they gave up six home runs in 16 and a third innings, and that's just the starters. So the trouble was the starters. The bullpen picked up the slack. But it's going to be an interesting offseason. Marcus Simeon, who had the go-ahead home run in game three of the wild card set, and all-world closer Liam Hendricks, not just saying that because he's Australian, both free agents here in the offseason. So it's going to be interesting to see what this Oakland athletic squad does, whether they re-sign those guys. I think a guy like Hendricks you absolutely need to lock up. He's one of the better closers in baseball as of right now. And taking a look, meanwhile, at the number one versus number five matchup with Tampa taking down the New York Yankees in a five-game set, 3-2 to two, the final game tally there in a series and a game five that were both instant classics. Two teams, a lot on the line. They really did not like each other, especially towards the end of the regular season when Aroldis Chapman threw over the head of Mike Brousseau, the uh, utility man who ended up getting the better of Chapman in that deciding game five, a go-ahead home run in the bottom of the eighth inning that proved to be the, the uh, winning run in a battle of the Titans, the pitching matchup in Game 5 featured Garrett Cole on a regular day's rest. He ended up striking out 9 over 5 and a third. Tyler Glass now got the start for the Rays on two days rest. He went just two and two-thirds innings, but it was enough as the bats backed it up. A 2-1 to one pitcher's duel was won thanks to the go-ahead home run of Mike Brousseau and the Tampa Bay Rays making a lot of people happy defeating the New York Yankees, the Evil Empire, sent down in five games. So as of right now, our championship series for the pennants of the American League and the National League feature the Astros taking on the Tampa Bay Rays in a series in which Tampa has come out extremely hot keeping an eye on that one as well and in the National League a rare one versus two matchup as LA takes on Atlanta in a battle of two teams that do most everything well Atlanta outstanding bats the pitching came in hot including Max Freed 
who picked up the slack after that starting rotation was just battered, bruised. Mike Fultonavich was cut. Soroka tore his Achilles tendon. Uh, it's a, an interesting storyline in Atlanta. And then there's the Dodgers, who are the number one seed, presumptive World Series champs, uh, the highest win total in baseball during the regular season. So those two series, both with a lot on the line and a lot to like, the AL matchup between Tampa and Houston being played at the Rangers' new warehouse of a stadium indoors in Arlington, Texas, and, of course, L.A., just south of Los Angeles in San Diego, taking on the Atlanta Braves at Petco Park. A couple of other storylines going on around baseball. We've got so much going on with the playoffs. It would be remiss if we didn't mention some Oakland Athletics news. Uh, everybody knows the name Billy Bean. He's the Athletics Executive B Vice President. He is the executive behind the Moneyball scheme and, you know, the movie with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. Uh, he, anytime you get played by Brad Pitt, you're doing something right. But Billy Bean, like I said, Executive Vice President of the Athletics, but no longer. He's always had interests outside of baseball, outside of sports. Uh, he is leaving the Oakland Athletics to pursue other sports ventures, specifically in European soccer, being recently purchased his stake in the uh, Dutch soccer club uh, back in early October. And he is taking his attention to international soccer, mainly in Europe. So Billy Bean on to new ventures. We were talking about Marcus Simeon and Liam Hendricks being free agents. They're going to go into free agency, and the A's are going to have to try to re-sign them without the help of Billy Bean, who is so good with numbers. And I'll be interested to see how he incorporates his baseball experience into soccer, a group that he is a part owner of, merged with Fenway Sports. Uh, John Henry, the owner of the Red Sox and Fenway Sports, also owns Liverpool. So there have always been soccer connections with Billy Bean. Best of luck as he pursues opportunities in European soccer mainly. Uh, would be remiss if we also didn't mention some sad news around baseball. Tommy Pham was uh, stabbed in an altercation in San Diego outside of his car earlier this week. Had to have surgery on his lower back where the stab wound was. He is good to go in good spirits and not expected to miss any time come spring training. So that's always good to hear. And uh, super sky point to a couple of legends in baseball, a trio of Hall of Famers all passing away since our last episode, the chairman of the board, all-time leader in World Series wins, and the Yankees leader in wins on the mound, uh, Whitey Ford, the six-time World Series champ, passed away at 91. Joe Morgan also at uh, 77 passed away recently, two-time National League MVP, back-to-back -back actually in 75 and 76 with that big red machine running the 70s in the National League. Joe Morgan, a 10-time All-Star, five-time Gold Glover, 22 years as a player, 25 years, and then some as a broadcaster, mainly known for his partnership with John Miller on ESPN, which in my opinion and in the opinion of many others is the best baseball broadcasting tandem, at least on television ever. And rest in peace to Cardinals legend Bob Gibson, who also passed away. So Whitey Ford, Joe Morgan, and Bob Gibson, all rest in peace to a trio of baseball legends. That's it. We got... Plenty more coming up on the catcher at Las Vegas Ballpark. It'll be an exciting finish to the baseball postseason. Don't go anywhere. What the aviators have done is they've given a reason for Las Vegas to love their baseball team again. From the groundbreaking on, literally it couldn't be done. It was just the timeline to get a state-of-the-art stadium built was impossible. To get the team organized, ready to go, to even get out here and play, Nobody really knew if we could do this, and the fact that not only we did it, but it was done at such a high professional, high quality level. Mention that we had some changes coming to our ballpark tours. They are now first class tours, and they're going to be on Thursdays at 4.30 and 5. They now feature a hot dog and a beverage of your choice. Be sure to visit the LVBallpark.com for bookings and more information. Once again, our first class tours, Thursdays at 4.30 and 5 here at Las Vegas Ballpark. Be sure to take advantage of our weekly 40% off deal at the team store here at the Las Vegas ballpark. All you got to do is go in there and mention the catch at Las Vegas ballpark. Tell them Matt sent you and you'll get 40% off our weekly deal at our team store. That'll do it for another edition of the catch here at Las Vegas ballpark. I'm Matt Neverett. Be sure to check out next week's episode. We'll check out who's still alive and the American and National League pennant races.